In this second lesson in qualitative research methods, we would like to discuss a little bit about epistemologies. Now don't panic. Epistemology seems to be a heavy word, but we will break it down. In fact, in research method course, you will come across a lot of terms. Every discipline has its discourse, we say. It has a set of vocabulary that we need to become familiar with. As we become familiar with the vocabulary, we become familiar with the concepts that are attached to them. So let us start by defining what is epistemology. And then we will talk about different types of relevant epistemologies for research. Then finally, we would end by making a distinction between qualitative research and quantitative research. What is epistemology? Epistemology is a knowledge about knowledge. In other words, how do we know? How do we know when we claim that this is true? So, how, what is the procedure in knowledge? That is what epistemology is about. It is a theory of knowledge. Now, there are four epistemological frameworks that are relevant for research. There are different epistemological systems in philosophy. We are not going into them. Let us start with positivism. What is positivism? Positivism is a theory of knowledge that holds that truth is something that we can empirically verify. Not only empirically verify, that we can measure, that we can objectively examine. So, positivists hold that the world exists outside me and I can look at it from outside the world and put my finger to different elements of this world. And so if you take a positivist approach to research, now you would look for very objective data. You would stand outside the data that you're examining. And that means you're going to go for numbers, quantitative research. Now, if you take a social constructivist approach, now in the history of philosophy, social constructivism actually developed as uh, in opposition to positivism. Between Newton and, say, Einstein, science progressed in a positivist way. And thank God, because technology developed out of this science. Industrial revolution came out of this positivist approach. And our life is better, in a sense, because of positivism. But there is a problem with positivism, that all the things in the world cannot be examined from outside, especially when we talk about social realities. Yes, material things, whether it is in chemistry or physics, even to some extent in biology, we can look at things objectively. But can we do that in sociology? Can we do that in psychology? Can we do that in anthropology, in the study of cultures? May not be. And therefore, there is a second epistemological framework, what is called social constructivism. And what do these people who talk about social constructivism say? They say, we are part of what we examine. We are part of what we study. And therefore, objective knowledge, especially when we talk about social realities, is not possible because the researcher is part of the researched. So let us say, I am studying a culture. I am an Indian, I am studying African culture. Somehow, I bring myself to the study of that culture. And even let us say a topic like poverty. Poverty is, if I have never experienced what extreme poverty is, that is going to affect my understanding of poverty. And therefore I become aware, I become part of what I'm studying. That's what social constructivists are saying. That the world is created, constructed by us, the social world. And if you're going for social constructivist approach, surely you're going for qualitative methods. Because in qualitative methods, the researcher is allowed to be part of the researched, the subject. And it is through interaction with what we study that we create human knowledge. But there is a third position. A third position is called critical realism. In critical realism, what we are trying to say is that, yes, the objective world may exist outside us, but our own understanding of the world is subjective. That means we need to be, yes, it is realistic, the world is real, it is not everything is constructed, but the way I perceive 
I put myself to it and therefore I have to be critical of what I am studying. And therefore, critical realism encourages mixed methods of study, quantitative as well as qualitative. The advantage of quantitative method is objectivity, as I have said earlier, that when we reduce everything to numbers, numbers become universal, numbers become objective. It is, we cannot say there are African numbers, Asian numbers or European numbers. Numbers are numbers. And that is the advantage of quantitative methods. High reliability and possibly validity. Whereas in qualitative methods, we, the advantage of qualitative methods is we focus on individuals. In quantitative methods, in the individuals are reduced to numbers. And in quantitative methods, that's what we focus on. What are individual perceptions? What do people experience? And qualitative methods give us an opportunity to explore experiences and perceptions of individuals.